Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoffman, his orchestra, our singing stars Amy Arnell and Bob Matthews, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who went caught putting batteries in his Uncle Artie Stebbins' suit because he heard him say you'd like to charge everything, calmly said... Come here. What are you doing with those farmers' overhauls and straw hats? Hey, Abbott. What? I've been working out on my Uncle Artie Stebbins' farm, and I hope I never see the place again. Well, what's the matter? All I did for two weeks was milk cows. Well, that's not hard work. No, but every time I shake hands now, I shake a finger at a time. I <laughs> Look, do all, do, all, do all of your uncle's cows give milk? Oh, cows don't give milk. No? You've got to take it away from them. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Does he have any Jersey cows? I don't know. I didn't see the license plate yet. <laughs> Costello, you don't know the first thing about milking a cow. Who knows? You don't. I do, too. The first thing you do is got to throw the cow on its back. Throw the cow on its back? Yeah. Well, what for? So the cream will be on top in the morning. <laughs> Look, Costello, never mind the cows. What else did you do on the farm? Ah, oh, I fed the chickens. Yes. I got it in the eggs. Hey, you know something, Abbott? What? There was one hen out there that laid an egg weighing 14 pounds. A hen laid an egg weighing 14 pounds? That's remarkable. What's remarkable about it? What else could she do with it? I, look, I still, <laughs> I still can't believe that a hen could lay an egg weighing 14 pounds. Well, I read where the mayor of New York laid a five-foot cornerstone. Oh, well, look. <laughs> uh, never mind that. I'm ripping. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> Costello, how about the crops? Did you have anything to do with the crops? Oh, I shot crops every night. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I mean, I need your help with the planting. Did you uh, sow the seed? Did I what? I said, did you sow the seed? No, I didn't even know it was ripped. <laughs> oh, what a dope. When I say sow, I don't mean sow, S-E-W. I mean sow, S-O-W, sow. So what? So what? <laughs> sow the seed. You see, you've got to sow the seed before you reap it. You sow the seed first and reap it later. What kind of talk is that? I used to reap my seed first, and then my mother would sow it later. When I say reap, I don't mean reap like rip when you rip. I mean, I mean reap like you reap when you sow. Ah, when you say reap, you, like you reap when you rip, you don't mean rip like rip when you reap. You mean reap like you reap when you reap instead of ripping when you reap when you sow. Now you have got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Stella, what salary did you get from your uncle? I got three dollars when it don't rain. And uh, what did you get when it rains? I get wet, you dope. No, 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 no. <laughs> you mean that's all, that's all you got for uh, you working dope? on the farm? No, Abbott. He sold me a pig for a dollar, my uncle did. He did? All I got to do is feed him, and then next winter, I'll sell him for a dollar. Now you paid, wait a minute, you paid a dollar for a pig, and after feeding him, yeah. you're going to sell him next winter for a dollar? That's right. But you, you can't make money that way. But I have the use of the pig all summer. Oh. <laughs> Hey, look there, but I got the pig with me. Come here, little buddy. Come here, bud. Hey, 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 wait. A <laughs> wait a minute, Costello. What's the idea of calling that pig Bud? That's my name. I named him after you because he's a little hammy. Now, just a minute, Costello. Now, look here. Now, let's get together. Come on. Hey, Abbott. What? This is the smartest little pig you ever saw. Here, little piggy. Dance with Abbott. Well, now, now, get him out of here. I'm not dancing with any pig. What were you doing last night at the Palladium? Well, that was my wife. Back it up, Costello. Costello. Just a minute. Where did you get this pig? Did you get it out of a litter? Yeah. When I eat... What did you say? Did you get this pig out of a litter? Certainly not. How could a pig get into a litter? The envelope wouldn't be big enough. He couldn't even fit in a mailbox. Oh, I know that. I know they don't have pigs in a mailbox. No? Then why do they have litter carriers? I lost one. <laughs> Let, let, let me see that pig, Costello. Well, he's a little short, isn't he? No, he isn't short. He's just as long as the other pig. <laughs> Costello, where do you think you're going to keep that pig? Uh, have you got a pen for that uh, porker? I beg your pardon? I say, have you got a pen for that porker? No, but I got a porker pen. Uh, <laughs> porker pen? 
I got a porker pan. Porker pan? I fill it with oink. Oh, <laughs> uh, stop talking like an idiot and get that dirty pig out of here. I don't like swine. You don't like swine? No. Then why don't you drink water? <laughs> or a glass of smoke. Yeah, never mind. Maybe what? you like a smoker and smoke it? Never mind that. Where are you going to keep that pig? Huh? Where are you going to keep that pig? Under the bed. Under the bed. Now, that is insanitary. Oh, the pig will get used to it. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Abbott. Where are you going? i I got to take the pig out for a walk. For a walk? Hmm. How in heaven's name do you walk a pig? The same as you walk a dog. Only you keep walking. <laughs> You could put your finger practically anywhere on the map of the United States and be pointing to a place covered by the recent nationwide survey of doctors' cigarette preferences made by three of America's leading independent research organizations. Well, they asked 113,000 doctors from coast to coast this simple question. What cigarette do you yourself smoke, doctor? More doctors named Camel as their smoke than any other cigarette. Try Camel. Observe for yourself how rich and full is the flavor of Camel's superb blend of costlier tobaccos. How cool and mild. That pack of Camels you try may well explain why. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. And now the romantic voice of Camel's Bob Matthews, who sings Wait and See. I shall be loving you through all eternity. But if you don't believe, wait and see, my heart will still be true. When stars on high have flickered out like little candles in the sky, and when the evergreen has withered on the bough. I still will feel the same as I do now. These little words I know can never show how true I be. But if you don't believe, Just you wait and see. All right, buddy, get up off that bench. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. It's you, Officer Smith. Why, Mr. Abbott, what are you doing sleeping on a park bench? Oh, that dumb Costello uh, brought a pig home and we got kicked out of our apartment. Now, now, where is that dope? Costello! Costello! I'm over here! <laughs> now I'm over here. I, I, I was over there. I was washing my face in the wash basin. That's not a wash basin. That's a bird bath. No wonder those woodpeckers put these lumps on my head. <laughs> Never mind that. Where did you get that uh, yellow beret? Oh, that's not a yellow beret. One of those woodpeckers had a bonsai. He dropped an egg. <laughs> I guess the yolk is on me. Yeah, all right. Look, 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 look. We've got to find ourselves an apartment. But first, uh, we've, we've got to have some breakfast. <laughs> got to have some breakfast? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we do, Abbott. What? We'll have a little breakfast. You know what I'll do? What? I'm going to I'll climb up the tree and I'll catch a squirrel. How's that? A squirrel? Yeah, we'll have that uh, for breakfast. Don't be silly. How could you catch a squirrel? Ah, oh, it's easy. I just climb up in a tree and make a noise like a nut. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Talk, Samson. Fold up those newspapers. Will you please fold up those newspapers? Okay, I'll fold them up. We may need them uh, for cover again tonight. Not me. I'm not sleeping on any more newspapers tonight. Last night I slept under the comic section. I didn't get a week to sleep. Why not? Diet Smith kept getting me up all night to answer the phone. <laughs> all right, come on. Let's get out of the park and find a place to live. Hey, yeah, but wait, wait till I get a little buddy, the little pig. Uh, uh, leave that pig here. Come on. Come on, piggy. We'll go find an apartment. Hey, there's a real estate office, Abbott. Let's go in. Uh, okay. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I would like to rent a three-room apartment. You would like to rent a three-room apartment? You would like to rent a three-room apartment? <laughs> oh, you mad, silly, impetuous boy, you. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Let's try somewhere else. Hey, Costello. What? Uh, we'll find a phone and call up another real estate office. Hey, there's a grocery store over there on the corner. Come on. Oh! 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 Ah, good old Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> All right, let's go to the grocery store. Uh, pardon me. Do you have a telephone? Step aside, you two. All right, men. Right this way. Forward, march. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, what's the idea of these guards in the grocery store? They're delivering a quarter of a pound of butter. Right. <laughs> Never mind that. Get on the phone and see if you can get in the spot. Okay. Hello? Is this Finnegan, O'Brien, Flanagan, and Murphy real estate company? Huh? I'd like to talk to Finnegan, O'Brien, Flanagan, or Murphy. Boy, have you got the wrong number. <laughs> Costello, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Oh, hey, Abbott, it's a lovely actress, Bessie May Mucho. Uh, we're looking for a place to live, Miss uh, Mucho. Oh, the housing shortage is exasperating. I have an aunt who's been forced to move into a nasty old shock on the other side of the railroad truck. Railroad truck? Oh, sure, Abbott, you know what railroad trucks are. That's where the chow-chow room runs on. <laughs> My goodness, Costello, what is that under your coat? Is that a hog? No, it isn't a hog. That's a baby poop. <laughs> Miss Mutual, do you know we can get an apartment, please? I think Mrs. Niles has a vacancy. Well, a cheerio and a pip pip to you. And a cherry pie and a La Brea tar pitch to you, too. Well, come on, Costello. Let's get over to Mrs. Niles and see about that apartment. Hey, 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 look who's coming up the street. It's our old friend, Melonhead. Hello, boys. Hello, Mr. Melonhead. Hey, we're looking for an apartment. We've got no place to live. Well, you're just the boys I'm looking for. I've got a room for you out on my ranch. All I ask, Costello, is that you do a little work to pay for the rent. And what do I have to do? It's very simple. The first thing you do is roll out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. You milk 20 or 30 cows, fetch a few bells of water from the well, chop down a couple of trees for firewood, feed the chickens and goats, and zingo, you're ready for breakfast. And could I have a little extra bowl of Wheaties? <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. Now, right after breakfast, you overhaul the tractor, plow up five acres of ground, dig a couple of sacks of potatoes, then you run over to the barn and pitch a few tons of hay, then you skip into the orchards, pick 50 or 60 barrels of apples, sort them and crate them, you spread three wagon loads of fertilizer over the onion patch, and zingo, you're ready for lunch. I'll just have a try. Soda. I don't want to waste any time. <laughs> it's much faster. All right, fine. Now, right after lunch, Costello, you get your shovel. You dig a drainage ditch around the farm, repair all the fences, clean up the silos, churn the butter, thresh the wheat, spray the tomatoes, prune the trees, trim the hedges, weed the cabbage patch, fill all the lanterns, bed down the cows, curry the horses, and zingo, you're ready for supper. Gee, all I do is eat. <laughs> After supper, Costello. After supper, you hitch up the buggy and take my daughter for a ride in the moonlight. She's a gorgeous, captivating redhead with lily-white skin and ruby lips. You drive down the lane. You hold her hands in yours. Suddenly, the horse stops. She moves over close to you. You put your arm around her waist. She puts her head on your shoulder, and then do you know what you do? Zingo! I'm ready for lunch! <laughs> The T-Zone, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, is your own laboratory for any cigarette. For it's your taste and your throat that can decide which cigarette tastes best to you and how it agrees with your throat. On the basis of the experience of many, many millions of smokers, we believe that camels may suit your T-Zone to a T. Recently, three leading independent research organizations put this question to 113,000 doctors all over America. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Camel was the brand named most. Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. 
With Carl Hoffer in the orchestra, here's Cavill's lovely Amy Arnell waiting for the train to come in. I'm waiting for the train to come in, waiting for my man to come home. I've counted every minute of each live long day, been so melancholy since he went away. I've shed a million teardrops or more, waiting for the one I adore. I'm waiting in the depot by the railroad track, looking for the choo-choo train that brings him back. I'm waiting for my life to begin. I'm waiting for the train to come in. apartment building. Now, let's find out about that empty apartment. Come on. Come on, on Piggy. Wait, wait. Wait a minute, Costello. You can't take that pig inside. Hey, yeah, but I can't leave the poor little pig out here in the street. He's a stranger in town. He wouldn't have anybody to talk to. Are you trying to tell me that pig can talk? Oh, sure he can talk. Can't you, Piggy? Wait, wait. Yes, you will, eh? See? That's pig Latin. Oh, come on. <laughs> Stop this silliness. Look, what do you want the pig for anyway? I'm hungry, Abbott. I thought we could cook it for dinner. But if Mrs. Niles sees that pig, she won't let us have the apartment. I'll put the pig up under the back of my coat. But it'll make a bulge. On me? Who's going to notice another bulge? I... <laughs> oh, all right. Let's knock on Mrs. Niles' door. Come on. Oh, my goodness. It's Mr. Rabbit and Mr. Costello. I wasn't expecting anyone. I'm not even dressed. And my hair looks a fright. I, I have a pigtail and back. That's nothing. I got a pigtail and back, too. <laughs> what? I says, I think pigtails are coming back, don't you? Uh, 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 quiet, Costello. Uh, Mrs. Niles, we understand you have a vacant apartment, and we'd like to rent it, please. What? I should have Costello living in one of my apartments. Why, ten minutes after he moved in, it would look like a pig pen. <laughs> Who told you? Uh, uh, <laughs> quiet, Costello. Uh, Mrs. Niles, Costello isn't really a bad fellow, come Yes, Mrs. Niles, everybody says I have a heart as big as a watermelon. Yes, and you have a stomach to match. <laughs> now, just a minute, Mrs. Niles. What right have you got to talk about my appearance? Get a load of those long ears of yours. You better stay in the house next week. Stay in the house? What for? It's the opening of the rabbit hunting season. Uh, will, will, you, will you stop that, Costello? Mrs. Niles, please let us have the apartment. If you do, I'll promise that Costello will, will make no trouble whatsoever. Oh, very well. I'll get the keys. <laughs> my word, what was that? I got a little hog. I mean, I mean, I mean, I got a little frog in my throat. <laughs> Costello, what is that sticking out in the back of your coat? Oh, that. Those are my ribs. Ribs? I never saw anybody's ribs stick out like that. Those are my spare ribs. <laughs> I don't know. There's something fishy going on here. I'll be back in a few minutes. You see, Costello? She almost caught you. Now, you can't sneak that piggy in uh, under your coat. You know that. Now, wait a minute, Abbott. Look, there's a nurse taking a baby out of that baby buggy. Maybe we can borrow the buggy. I'll speak to her. Um, <clears throat> uh, pardon me, madam. Is that your baby? No, this is Mrs. Martin's baby. I'm the baby's nurse. My, what a beautiful baby. <laughs> Would you like to hold the baby in your arms? Would I? Oh! Uh, Costello, you're not holding the baby, you're holding the nurse. You hold what you like and I'll hold what I like. Look, miss, we'd like to borrow your baby carriage. Oh, do you have a baby? Yes, I do. I, ha I have it on my back, under my coat. What's the baby doing there? He likes to ride piggyback. 
I never heard of carrying a baby on your back. Well, I'm part Indian. <laughs> well, I'm taking Mrs. Martin's baby upstairs now, so you can borrow the buggy. But I have to have it back in half an hour. I have to take the baby out for some more fresh air. Oh, there's nothing like fresh air to build you up. You must have spent a lot of time in the open. <laughs> seeing you boys later. Bye-bye. Sorry. Hey, quick, Costello. What? Get the pig in the baby buggy before Mrs. Niles comes back. Come on. Hey, I can hardly wait till we get this pig in the apartment and, and we can start cooking it. Boy, am I hungry. Yeah, I can taste those pork chops now. Hey, quick, here comes Mrs. Niles. Pin that blanket up around the pig's head. Hurry okay, up. Okay, okay. Well, boys, I have the keys. Oh, who have you got there in the buggy? Uh, Mrs. Martin's baby? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. We're mining him for his nurse. Oh, I must be the little darling. <laughs> Word, look at that blanket up around the poor thing's head on a hot day like this. Why, well, the poor thing will be bacon. Yes, in a minute. <laughs> My, just look at the nose on that child. I don't like to gossip, but he's got a nose just like his father. Well, here are the keys to the apartment. And, Mr. Costello, I want you to remember the rules of this building. First, there'll be no cooking in the apartment. Secondly, there'll be no noise, no parties, no dancing, no singing, no playing the radio after 9 o'clock, no loud talking, no heavy walking in the halls, and no banging doors. Do you understand that, Mr. Costello? Yes, Mrs. Niles, but I think it's only fair to warn you that my corduroy pants squeak a little. <laughs> Come on, Castello, let's get to the apartment. <laughs> well, Castello, we've got a nice hot fire going in the fireplace. Now, hand me that knife, and we'll get the pig ready for the barbecue. Come on. All right, Castello, grab the pig, and uh, let's get it over with. Well, yeah, but, Come yeah, on. We can't kill this little pig. Why not? Look at the way he's looking at us with his little brown eyes. Oh. <laughs> Gee, Abbott, did you hear that? Abbott. What? He said, Dada. Dada. <laughs> Dada, watch out. <laughs> Look out. Uh, uh, he slipped out of my arms. Where, where did he go? I think he ran under the bed. Well, crawl under the bed and get him out. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what, what was that? I think I knocked over my piggy bank. <laughs> Come on out here, piggy. Hey, piggy. Hey, little piggy. Oh, my goodness. Who is it? It's me, Mrs. Niles. Oh. Holy smoke! We gotta hide the piggy, you Where will we hide it? Wait a minute. Put him in the dresser drawer. Boys, open the door. Just a minute, Mrs. Niles. We're dressing. Yeah, hurry up, Costello, and get that pig in the drawer. Yeah, all right, all right. Hey, Abbott, look at that. Isn't that cute? He's trying to get into my pajamas. <laughs> Darn that pig. Uh, coming, Mrs. Niles. Oh, hello, Mrs. Niles. Don't hello me. Goodbye, Mrs. Niles. <laughs> What's all the squealing and noise going on in here? Oh, uh, we were just rehearsing a play. What play? Pygmalion. <laughs> What's the matter with Mrs. Niles? Uh, those pajamas. What about them? They're mine. They're, they're crawling out of the dresser drawer. They're still mine. <laughs> That's why I quit wearing them. They're, they always crawling up on me. <laughs> Mr. Costello, I demand to know what you have in that drawer. Well, Mrs. Niles, I guess we might as well confess we became so attached to Mrs. Martin's little baby that we thought we would keep it here for a little while. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? I thought it was cute. Yes, but you'd better take him back so Mrs. Martin won't worry. Wait, wait, wait. that sounded like a pig. Oh, no, that, that, that was the baby. He has too much iron in his blood. Iron? Yeah, pig iron. <laughs> oh, oh, I see it all now. You do have a pig in that drawer. Why, of all the nerves. How dare you bring a pig into this apartment? Here, give me that pig. I'm throwing it out of here this minute. Wait a minute, Mrs. Niles. You can't throw my pig out. He's all I have left in the world. Whenever anyone else scorns me, I can always tell my troubles to my little pig. You give me that dirty pig. I'll get rid of him in a hurry. Oi, oi. Wait, Mrs. Niles, please wait. I can't throw this little pig out now. And why not? Didn't you hear what the little pig called you? No, what? Mother. Oh, <laughs> Abbott 
Tony Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the men of the Navy's carrier Air Group 83, who bombed and torpedoed Japan's dwindling fleet and carried the fight to Japan itself. Since the beginning of the war, we have sent over 150 million free cigarettes to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. Tonight, the camels go to U.S. Naval Hospital, Charleston, South Carolina, U.S. Army Camp Carson Convalescent Hospital, Colorado, U.S. Marine Hospital, Boston, Massachusetts, and Veterans Hospital, Fayetteville, Arkansas. In your honor, men of the Navy's carrier, Air Group 83. Broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, our rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, Costello, we had a lot of fun tonight, didn't we? Yes, we did. And I'd like to thank... Just a minute, Mr. Costello. I hate to interrupt you, but I represent the annual Radio Award Committee, and I have a cup here. Each year, we give this cup to the outstanding radio star. Year before last, Bob Hope took it. And last year, Bob Hope also took it. But this year, Mr. Costello, we want you to take it. You want me to take it? Yes, take it to Bob Hope. He won it again. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Happy birthday, Chuck. Good night. next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your tea zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a tea. C-A-M-E-L-S Smoke a pipe, mister. Then try Prince Albert, the choice of more pipe smokers than any other tobacco on earth. Choice mellow tobacco, specially treated to take out tongue bite and parch. Crimp cut to burn slower, cooler. That's Prince Albert. Try it. And be sure on Saturday night to tune in the great Prince Albert radio show, Grand Ole Opry, Coast to Coast on NBC. Listen to this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company.